This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. All of our podcasts are available from our website, www.sas.ac.uk. Portuguese. 
And not surprisingly, the students were confused between their home language, Indo-Portuguese, and standard Portuguese. And in fact, if European Portuguese had been introduced to Sri Lanka earlier, the Creole would have been lost because of decreolization. That means the Creole becomes more like European or standard Portuguese. And I think in Goa, that would have been the case, because in Goa there is no Creole, because of the 450-year relationship that it had with Portugal. Portuguese Turgis are multilingual, and they speak Sinhala, Tamil, and English to varying degrees, depending on their exposures. So perhaps improving their linguistic skills, the standard of education, and placing emphasis particularly on women's education, which has a profound effect on children, might be a way forward. In Sri Lanka, education is free to everybody uh, from primary, secondary to tertiary level. The 1950s and 60s were periods of heightened ethnic tensions because of language issues, the single only bill, which was passed in 1956. And this post-independent drastic move towards one language, the language of the majority, Sinhalese, 74% of the population, didn't all go well with the minorities. The Burgers, people of European descent, had studied in the English medium, and they had a particular advantage in the labor market, particularly in white collar jobs. The Dutch Burgers had adopted English as their mother tongue. So studying in Swabasha, or mother tongue, was feasible for the Sinhalese and the Tamils, but not for the smaller ethnic groups. But now, now English, Sinhala, and Tamil are all official languages. Having said that, an 18-year-old Portuguese burger in Trincomalee, whom I interviewed last year, was the first boy from his village, Palayuttu, to obtain a place in the University of Sri Lanka, Peradeniya, to study medicine. And this is a highly competitive course. <coughs> uh, he studied all the way in Tamil, and he didn't have any option but now his school has introduced the English medium. Interconnected histories and cultural affinities of ethnically diverse communities could be exploited to connect Portuguese burgers with others. But when language is problematic, other cultural traits could be explored. So this Indo-Portuguese was the mother tongue also of Afro-Sri Lankans. Their ancestors were brought to the island in several ways throughout the colonial era, mainly from the 16th to the 19th centuries, and they spoke the lingua franca of the day, Portuguese. Afro-Sri Lankans, like the Burgers, are Roman Catholics, but nowadays it's only the elderly in their community who speak Portuguese. But everybody can sing Portuguese Creole songs, so the vestiges of this endangered language are embedded in the lyrics. The British spoke Indo-Portuguese during the initial phase of their administration, and they also prepared bird lists, Callaway and Fox, in the early 19th century. And they also, the British missionary Robert Newstead, translated the New Testament to Indo-Portuguese of Creole, and it went into seven editions, which is what he needed for his missionary work. So Indo-Portuguese was the prestige language of the day, and its speakers were sought after as interpreters and translators. In the 1980s, the Battle Burgers <coughs> conducted the annual general meetings of the Catholic Burger Union in Portuguese, but now the language is limited to the spoken form and the lyrics of songs. Preparing a word list for them in Indo-Portuguese might be a useful way forward. In 1974, the Catholic Burger Union in the printed a booklet of cantigas, those are songs, with religious and secular songs, and it would be worth translating these songs for them. And one of the songs, entitled Mara Nutem Fundu, in this booklet of Portuguese ballads, connects these burgers in Baticlo to an area in Portugal called Trashos Monts, where these ballads are still sung, and the Azores, and also Brazil, the northeast of, northeast of Brazil. So I've got a song for you, but I'll keep it to the end, I think. I can sing. <laughs> In 1974, uh, you see a program where 
Associated motorways group sponsored a program, and uh, these songs are sung on television, and they dance Caprinas. So music and dance also connects the burgers with other Sri Lankans. So two of the songs in their booklet of songs uh, are well-known Sinhala bailas. So, and baila is a popular genre of music which cuts across all ethnic, gender, age, and social barriers. And Molly Bastian, its composer, was of mixed descent, Portuguese, Dutch, and Sinhalese. And he sang in five Sri Lankan languages, Sinhala, Tamil, English, Malay, and Portuguese. So baila, which evolved in post-independent Sri Lanka, combines European, African, and Asian elements. Another way that we could connect these Portuguese burgers uh, to, the, to the Commonwealth and the outside world is by exploring uh, linguistic connections. But I won't make uh, any details, but I want to show you that the, the similarities and the differences between Indo-Portuguese and Standard Portuguese. So Indo-Portuguese has become like Sinhala and Tamil. It has become a word final language, where we say subject, object, verb whereas European Portuguese, like English, is a verb media. And see, in Indo-Portuguese, the noun adjective comes after the noun, and in Standard Portuguese, the adjective precedes the noun. In Indo-Portuguese, the genitive precedes the noun, and in Standard Portuguese, the genitive precedes. And if you compare positions, Indo-Portuguese has post positions and Standard Portuguese has prepositions. But 90% of the vocabulary of the Creole language is from its base language, Portuguese. So you can understand Portuguese speakers. So emphasizing the closeness of Indo-Portuguese with European Portuguese might give them an ability to network globally with groups of all countries. And Portuguese, I believe, is the seventh largest, mostly widely spoken language in the world. So marriages of the burghers are not complete without a dance called Caprinha. So last year in September, the BBC World Roots went and they heard these songs, uh, and they were surprised for 500 years. The tradition has been carried out. And Lucy Darren, an ethnomusicologist from the School of Oriental and African Studies. Next door, you can hear her commentaries on the BBC website if you want to listen to them. Um, this poster advertises a performance in the well known Beatut <laughs> Gallery at Karango, the capital, and it gives a quick history of the Africans. Uh, they came in 1500 with the Portuguese from Mozambique, so there's a historical connection. So Caprina implies an Afro-Portuguese hybrid because Inya is the Portuguese diminutive and Caf is the name for East Africans, for Africans. So this music is similar to jazz. It's got syncopations and cross rhythms. So Caprina songs have come down for hundreds, about 500 years through an oral tradition. And there are some songs recorded in the 19th century that I worked on which are in the London, in the British Museum. And these were collected by a British civil servant who worked in the Eastern province. And due to his folkloric interest, he collected all these manuscripts. So the curator of this collection, Mr. Somadasa, asked me to translate these songs uh, on a voluntary basis. And when I accepted this task, I didn't realize what a challenge it was going to be. <laughs> and I didn't know what a Creole language was. So Creole languages are allowed to evolve freely. They're not standardized, and in any language, words change over time and place. So the language of European Portugal also had changed through the 400 years that I was looking at. So using standard Portuguese as a benchmark, I translated these songs. So, but without going into literary detail, I just want to so show you one verse. So this is Creole Portuguese. And my tra how I translated was the black part using European Portuguese. And this is what it says. If you want, I will take you to my land. My body becomes a boat. My arm becomes a sail. So there's a lot of literary potential in these songs. So just to conclude now, in the Portuguese, lost currency as a prestige language due to political changes. But the Portuguese burghers have continued to speak in the Portuguese. 
But there's a tension between holding on to the language and in modernizing in a globalized world where English has established its dominance. The survival or loss of language isn't necessarily a question of ethnicity. I think it's linked to extra-linguistic features like the size of the communities, the environments in which they live in, employment opportunities, attitudes to out-marriage, the degree of language proficiency among women, the degrees of isolation and marginalization. So the comparative advantage of these Portuguese burgers is their musical traditions. So music could be exploited to connect them to the larger popul populace. Educating the Sri Lankans about these musical and dance traditions of the Portuguese burgers and the flows to Sri Lankan popular music could be a way forward. Connecting the Portuguese burgers through IT to the Portuguese-speaking Commonwealth, particularly Mozambique and other Lusophone countries, and establishing networks would be quite uplifting for them. A few from Portugal have visited these communities, but their links with Portugal is quite tenuous. So after the 2004 tsunami, when many Portuguese burgers were lost to the Indian Ocean, um, the Dutch burgers in Carambo helped them because they saw them all being burgers. And also the burger diaspora in Australia helped these Batiflo burgers at this time of crisis. So I said earlier that education was free to all Sri Lankans, but it's not that straightforward because for children of low socioeconomic status, obtaining an education is quite problematic because they lack the minimum provisions and parental encouragement. So some of these burger children now are sponsored by Australians, not necessarily burgers, but by Australians. And the only condition that they were attached is that once a month they have to write to their sponsor in English. The leaders of this community are now quite clear about the pecking order of language importance. Singhala and Tamil at the local level, English for furthering their careers, but Portuguese is most important for their identity. Their determination has kept alive in the Portuguese against all odds for half a millennium. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Excuse me, yeah. Sorry. Are we going to get the music? Yes, what happened to the song? As we know, I think. I was worried about the time. Yes, yeah, okay, we're okay. The youngest person in the room will do it. There we are. 